Howdy. Hello. Welcome. Switch over the comments. See who's here. Hello, everyone. Good to see you all. If there's a chance that Shanna is listening, which I don't think she is, I hope it went well. Good luck. Good luck. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. I That's right. That. She doesn't like that. Shanna doesn't like that. Shanna, how did your interview go? Tell us. I hope you got the job. I sent you happy thoughts. <laughs> Shanna. Shanna. I'll say the Batman voice. <laughs> Uh, so oh, <sighs> first thing, I mean, there's not a lot of people in here, but, um, so Matt said no super chats today. Give your money to Foxy and oh, yeah. I wholeheartedly Foxy. say yes, yes. Yes. Give your money to Foxy. She needs our help. Mods are doing an awesome job posting the link of that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to need to get that link because I was too busy earlier to do anything, but I want to help out. So yeah, we got to help Foxy out because she's Foxy Ann. Yes, absolutely. And everyone deserves a good night's sleep for the love of God. <laughs> hey, yeah. it's great. Shanna. She's here. Shanna, how did it go? Uh, interview. We hope you got the job. <laughs> Shanna. Did you get the job? Did you get it? <laughs> All righty. We're creepy. A little bit. Yeah. So, and one more thing. Uh, Annette, your kitty. So when it has, when she has her kittens, since I'm your daddy, will they be my grandkitties? Of course. That's how that works. I hope so. I, th I think the cat is close because... She's saying that the cat has been very uh, needy today. Like a cat that doesn't snuggle, that really wants to snuggle. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I want some so, kitties. And I, kitties. I think maybe technically it was supposed to happen last week. So it's uh, any day now. That's hard to pin down. That's hard to pin down. How many grand kittens will you have? My guess is four, but I don't know. I don't know, because I don't think she looks, like, super, super big. So my guess is four. But I could be wrong. Mm. Could be wrong. Yeah, and she's not very old either. Yeah, I've so, seen some. Yeah. Okay. It went really well. Now I just wait for an offer letter, Shanna says. All right. Oh, Carson, yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome, Shanna. That's good. Cool. <laughs> we will not take a kitty. Oh my he god. He will take one. The peas will take one. Kelly will take one. Jake will be, I don't know. He'll leave me if I take on another cat. It's not his house. We have so many street kitties in our neighborhood, and that's why I have three cats because there's just so many. And I'm like, oh, we'll take another one in. Can't save them all, but you can save four or five or six or so, I guess. I'm so, I'm so like overwhelmed by pets. I can't have any more right now. I say that, but mm. oh, just one more cat, whatever. Yeah, you managed to fit one more in there. You so, I mean, it's just what once the litter box go box is going, like why not just throw another one on the mix? Sure, why not? So, planet tanks planet and fishies, tank. and not just any planet tank, but the the high tech, the aquatic gardens, the the, the algae free aesthetically pleasing highlight yeah. co2 injected tanks lots of fertilizer if mm -hmm. you need it um yeah like the one behind me and the ones behind kelly right she's got two or three of those i guess you're working on number three trying working to get on number three that it's, one it's up getting par. a lot better it's looking better it's kind of clearing up so and i've got um about five ish yeah. Um, like CO2 injected where I want to keep them algae free. But then, you know, I also, since I have a lot of tanks, you know, I have most of my tanks are, they're all planted, but most of them are just, uh, you know, medium to low light and no CO2. So, no oh God, now me and ganged up on about not letting, uh, Jenna have a cat. <laughs> we have a cat, damn it. We have a cat. We will always have a cat. And I have always agreed to that. But 
I gave in with the dogs. Well, I mean, your kitty's old. Maybe she wouldn't want a kitten. Yeah, that's the, the thing. thing she, think about. she would get upset. She might get upset. Not every cat can take it. Yeah. Uh, so, anyway, the stuff that we have to do to maintain these tanks, does it hurt the fish? Does it help the fish? Does it depend? Is it somewhere in between? All of the above? What you think? Hang on. I just got a text. Something screwed up with one of my timesheets. Oh, I'll fix that later. I'll fix that later. I don't know what okay. happened. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. so what were we saying? Sorry. Uh, we were just talking about our uh, our well-maintained planet tanks that have no algae, that have CO2, high light, fertilization. Are they harmful to the fish? Do they help the fish? Does it depend on the fish? Is it somewhere in between? Yeah. All of the I above. Mean, I would say it leans towards helps the fish. It's not for every fish. Mm -hmm. Not every condition is for every fish. Some fish don't want to live in a planted tank because they want to eat all the plants. Yeah. But really, they would love living in a planted tank. You just wouldn't love having them. You don't want to, you know, silver dollars. That's not a good idea. Yeah. See, I didn't know anything about silver dollars. So before the stream, oh, like, what, why, what's the problem with silver dollars? Oh. Oh God! They're just they're they'll they'll just view it as an all-you-can-eat salad bar. Well, so, even though they're pretty fish, but don't do it. If they're don't not compatible it. with, if they're not compatible with plants, then they're not compatible with me. So not my jam either. Not my jam either. So no, but I would lean toward the conditions that are good for a planet tank are good for fish and those the professional aquascapers especially i think their tanks are really great for fish because they, they have so few of them in such a big tank i mean they're yep. so little so viable. clean and stable so and clean they, and so well maintained i mean those right they're getting like two to three water changes a week. And I think fish love water changes. I have never seen an example where fish didn't love water changes. That's why Dan of Dan's fish does his big flow through system is because fish yep, love water. Clean water. water I mean, our fish come from rivers and big lakes. They don't come from like puddles, 90 gallon puddles. So, uh, you know, except for killifish, I don't know why they like. Well, to hang killifish out are are odd, but even killifish like clean water. If you give them water yeah. changes, they're not going to complain. Nope. So yeah, I mean those those fancy aquascape tanks, they're all peaceful fish. They're not trying to like balance aggression in them. Like you know, it's usually just some little tetras or some little rasporas. So yeah, things are pretty happy in there. But it doesn't even have to be that way. Like no. both of us, we have very heavily stocked, well-maintained planted tanks. Yeah, and it allows me to stock a lot higher yep. than if I had plastic plants. I could not keep this level of stocking. Um, I would have to be much more vigilant in cleaning my filter, which I should clean my filters more often. But it's very hard for me to clean an FX6 by myself. That's very heavy. So I don't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is why I want a sump. Sumps I could clean by myself. So, but yeah, we both have very, very heavy fish loads. We are both, I would say we are both kind of 50% on plants and 50% on fish. And right. I, but like Maybe. my fish, when I buy them, I have them for life. You know, as for long me, as. For the most yeah. part, yeah. Yeah, I mean, unless I could find a good home for them. Um, I don't really want to ship fish. So, but you mm -hmm. know, if I had fish that were truly miserable, I would find them a new home, but I buy them with some forethought and I, I try to keep them forever. So, uh, yeah. And yeah. so I'm not like, obviously the fish still come first, you know, it's for me, it's still about keeping the fish, but I'm not going to get fish that are not compatible with plants um now there are still plants that i've put in certain tanks like uh inexplicably pogo stem and hell for i there's something in my living room tank that just cannot get enough of the leaves 
And so I cannot grow it right. in there. And, but I'm not going to like pinpoint the culprit and move them out. I'm going to move right. the plant and out. My, I have some Sikiopteris Ocellaris gobies, which are a, kind of a bigger goby. And they do rasp my swords a little bit. And so mm -hmm. the older leaves are looking a little bit trashed. But that's that. I mean, they're, it's not too bad. It's not as bad as a pleco would do. Right. And I, they did they did trash my alternate there Renickii. So, I mean, that's that. I can't grow it that take because yep. I'm not getting rid of all my fish to grow one plant. And I don't I don't think most people would do that. And if you were an aquascaper, I don't think you would get Sicyopterus or Solaris, but you would get fish that could live happily in that tank. That would live peacefully because you want pretty looking schools. So you need peaceful fish mm -hmm. for that. So, so we can go over some of the individual elements that go into uh, a planet tank like this. And just, you know, we can kind of talk about like which ones can be harmful and which ones are not a big deal. But of course, it's going to be fish dependent. So the so when you when we go through this list, keep in mind those things as you are selecting fish you know, making yeah. sure that they can tolerate that thing. So like, for right. example, the first, the first thing we can talk about is the fertilization. So nitrates, obviously too many nitrates, not good, but they're fish and invertebrates that, that can tolerate a wide range of nitrates. Some right. of them can tolerate very high nitrates. And my nitrates never get high because I have so many plants. I have plants, yeah. you know, growing out of my tank and those really suck down nitrates. So I would argue that my tank probably doesn't have near as high of nitrates as an unplanted tank. No, I have to add. I have to add, add it. Yeah. Same here. Even with like all these like voracious eating rainbows, I still got to put nitrates in there because mm -hmm. too much stuff growing. And um, yeah. Yeah. And I forget to fertilize half the time because, you know, there's, there's fish food and fish waste. And mm -hmm. I mean, I believe there's a song about that even. I think yep. I heard a song somewhere. If you want to do like I do. Fertilize with fish poo. So. So other I mean, macros. And that's because I forget to fertilize. I'm very forgetful. So. Yeah. It doesn't. And I can notice, at, like, there are weeks where I'll go and I did not, uh, I did not fertilize. And there are certain plants that I will see have stunted tips like a lot of the the highlight requiring ludwigia they... yeah and i don't tend to grow those i grow a lot mm -hmm. of crypts those can feed from roots and there's yeah, a lot of forgiving. weeds there's a lot of fish waste at the roots so i think that yep and i use a more nutrient heavy substrate you know i'm not using plain sand so that's why i can get away with some things and and i do get away with it because i'm so forgetful i always fertilize when i water change and sometimes I forget the rest of the week. So that's me for sure. Yeah. Almost always forget the rest of the week until maybe like the day of water change. Like, oh, uh, no. well, I was going <laughs> to water change anyways. I'm not yeah. going to fertilize now because I'm going to water change tonight. So I'm not going to fertilize now. But yeah, so I don't think fertilizers are harmful. If you feel trepidatious about fertilizing, even with a, an unplanted take, get one of the all in ones like Easy Green or Nylock G, and just follow the package directions. Yep. Because so, the package directions are safe. And I use Easy Green, like, because it's easy, and I'm forgetful as is. So. Yeah, and so some of the more, har like, potentially harmful things in a in fertilizer, like copper, if you follow directions, the amount of copper mm -hmm. that is in the fertilizer is so right. small that it will not harm your shrimp and whatever right. else is copper sensitive and and invertebrates need some copper in their diet i mean yeah. the snail cookies and all that i'm sure they, they have some copper in them it's just lower mm -hmm. i mean i'm not i'm not actively adding like cupric oxide into my tank nope i don't need that much copper in fact i might even have enough copper in my tap water you don't need that much so but if you use a packaged product like Easy Green, you're not going to overdose it. And honestly, even clear up to like professional aquascape levels, if that's your comfort level, you can you can use all-in-ones for as long as you want. 
and follow the package directions, maybe going a little more, a little less, depending on how yeah. things look and you're going to be fine. So, so another one phosphate because it's required in such small amounts. And it's, yeah, and you know, I have it's, pretty high phosphate out of my tap. Yeah, I have a couple so, of PPM of, of phosphate. Yeah, I have like a 5 PPM of phosphate out of the tap because I live in farm country. So there's a lot of runoff. Right. So and before the stream, we were talking fish. about the yeah. runoff. Right. It's fine for fish. It's fine for drinking. And if you, I mean, phosphate isn't as worrisome for, for fish or for humans as like nitrates. But if your nitrates out of the tap are so high that you're worried about your fish, you shouldn't drink that. Like that's not good for you either, especially if you're pregnant or nursing. Like you should do something to clean up your water. Yeah, so, probably so. Yeah. Or if you have a pregnant cat. <sighs> a pregnant cat. No, no nitrates for the pregnant cat. I know we got to think of the babies. They're my grandkids. My grandkittens. <laughs> think so, of honey. So yeah, fertilizers are safe. If you're nervous, just follow the directions and just think about it. Even though you're adding more with a high tech tank, you're sucking out so much more because it turns into plant mass. Where and it's, it's if you're supposed. maintaining a, a high tech planted tank properly, then the stuff that the fertilizer that it doesn't suck out, you will be uh, exchanging for fresh water at right. the end of the week. And the higher Most tech your tank is, the more important maintenance is to you. Yep. So you're changing water. I mean, my goal is to do 75% a week. Professional aquascapers, they'll change two to three times, like 30% a week. And I have yet to see a freshwater fish, because I don't know about salt water. But even then, I would assume all fish love clean water. They love changing water. I mean, if you have bad tap water, you should do something about that for your own health. Yeah. But if you have average tap water, fish love clean water. That's why Dan built his big system where there's constant flow through because the fish are happier. Mm -hmm. So, and plants are happier too. Plants love water changes. I mean, if I had an automated system, I would probably change 5% every day. Oh, but man, I don't. Awesome. I mean, the only thing that would keep me from doing water changes are one, time constraints. Two, if I lived in a part of the country where there were droughts. But I don't. It just rained an inch here last night. So it rains here. It's not a problem. It rained quite. It's been raining all week for or all last yeah. week, too. Yeah, like we, get quite a bit of, we get quite a bit of rain here. But if you live in a place with droughts, I get it. I get it. Mm -hmm. You've got to think about things. All right, so so <sighs> fertilizers follow the follow the instructions. Yep. Don't Just, dose a ridiculous amount, and it's going to be fine. And it goes for basically anything that you put in the tank, including exactly. Prime. Don't follow overfeed. The, yeah, don't overdose prime either. You can right. zap all the oxygen out of. Exactly, out of your tank. you've got to follow directions. That's true with any kind of tank. So. Oh, that I'm breaking the rule. Too. Yeah, I'm breaking the rule and looking at chat because I mm -hmm. just saw Eakin say he's got new rainbow fish. Ooh, what'd you Melanie get? What'd you get? Williams what'd get? Ooh, that's a fun one. Good job. I just got uh, Melanotania Running River. That's an exciting cool. one I just got. <sighs> yep. And then Matt, he does look sexy in that new shirt. That's pretty great. Bex did a good job. Yes, she did. She's amazing. I got to get one of those shirts. So. All right. So Matt, that's, stop uh, spamming. Jesus. <laughs> he posted it twice. <laughs> I mean, I guess he's a mod. I suppose it's mod power. Don't product. abuse your mod powers. Okay. So CO2. CO2 is scary, the last Scary, scary. It is. I get that. It's a lot less scary if you get a good regulator, though. I'm here to tell you a cheap regulator is much scarier because it's harder to dial in your adjustment. I mean, I have uh, Greenleaf Aqua regulators and they're expensive. I'm not going to lie to mm. you, they're expensive. However, they dial in so nice and they hold, they don't drift, they're rock steady. And 
that's worth it to me because I have used a cheap regulator that failed on me. I'm not saying you need to pay as much as I did, but I, and I haven't tested every regulator cause I'm not a tester. Like I'm just not, I'm not, it's not what I do. I would rather just buy a good one and be done. Yeah. So I have tested, I will say I've got, you know, I have those $80 regulators. Mm-hmm. I have a $150 regulator and I have a $200 regulator. And uh, surprise, the $200 regulator mm-hmm. is my favorite. Yeah, It's the absolute easiest to dial in, mm-hmm. followed directly by the 150 And then the, uh, then the F zones, you know, the $80, $90 ones, they are, um, they're a little bit more finicky to dial in, but they're also still reliable. They just take a little bit more work. You yeah. really got to keep an eye on them. Yeah. Um, and, and then, of course, they must be dual stage, as Bex is saying. Yeah, you got to get a dual stage one. Um, you can build your own. Um, you just need a really good needle valve. There's directions for it. I think Rex Grigg on his website has directions. I'm not building them because I don't DIY anything. But and people I do DIY it. and I'm not building one. <sighs> They're fine out of the box. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think that you can save money and you can get one that's really good if you build it. But I don't DIY things. That's not what I do. I just pay other people. So um, if you're nervous, get a better regulator. It's worth money for the peace of mind. Yeah. Um, don't get the cheapest one. And once the co-op has theirs out, I think it will be a good option. Just because... Yeah. The co-op rigorously tests everything and they have really great product support. So if you find that that needle valve is drifting a lot on you, send it back and they'll, they'll refund you. They're really, Mm -hmm. really good. So even though none of us have tried the co-op one, I I would trust it. Based on the price point, he's saying like 129 ish. um, That's probably going to be very competitive with, Mm -hmm. with the 150 plus regulators out there. So Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I would not hesitate right. to say get that one when it mm-hmm. whenever it comes out. And it'll power two or more tanks, right? Because it doesn't come with two. Two, two manifolds. Yeah. Possibly. And I think you can add more to it. I wonder if he's gonna sell the modules. I don't Hopefully. know. But that cuts the cost down. Regulators mount up. I like that. Mm-hmm. They do. I mount up. Yeah. So, so I mean, you're going to have a lot of peace of mind with your fish, though, if you get a better one. So what does CO2 do to the water and to the fish? Mm -hmm. Well, it does lower your pH, but pH naturally swings in the wild anyways. Uh, You know, in the morning, it's uh, going to be sort of high. And then throughout the day, it's going to... I've got that backwards. It's going to be lower. Mm -hmm. And then as CO2 is consumed throughout the day, there's going to be less of it. Yeah. So, I mean, and pH changes all day and fish can adapt to that. They're just fine. That said, there are storm hits, you know, lots of rain. Mm -hmm. That's going to change the pH at a drop of a hat at any time. Right. Because it's going to dilute your water column. Mm-hmm. So, and every fish does respond a little differently. So they always say like, you know, when you adjust your pH, you want to like look at a drop checker or take the pH of your water and that's good, but you have to watch your fish. You have to watch to see if they're starting to act twitchy, if they're going to the surface of the water and gasping. And if you catch it right away, they're fine. You just yeah. turn this, turn it down drop an air stone in, turn the CO2 off for a little bit and just let them recover and they'll be okay. Now, if you're not home and that happens, you're going to lose fish. Most likely. Yeah. So, and that's another thing that you need to, you need to research your fish. You got to look at what their, their pH tolerance is. Mm-hmm. You know, they might be able to tolerate the pH swings like most fish can, but maybe the, right. the range of your tank the swing puts them a little bit too far out of that tolerable range. But like, the thing is, is a lot of those published pHs online are not correct. A lot of them always say keep your pH neutral just because that's like the safe bet. And so right. it's like not too acidic and uh, yeah. Yeah. But, but my pH changes 
quite a bit every day. And my fish at least are fine. one. Exactly. Yeah. And they're fine. Yeah, they're fine. Um, I will say that the fish I've had that are more twitchy are um, certain gobies, like the, um, what would that be? Yeah. Like the stiffidon gobies, that kind of goby, the little ones. They're fussier. You've got to watch them. They'll get twitchy. They'll start gasping at the surface. So you just, you have to pay attention. And every time I switch out my CO2 and put on a new bottle, and I have, I don't do that if I'm going to leave the house. Like I do it, you know, like on a Saturday afternoon or on a Sunday night or something. And so I can keep an eye on things to dial it in. Because I also like to turn my CO2 pretty high. As high as I can. <laughs> Yeah, as high as they can tolerate. Exactly. I yeah. mean, in my living room, um, that my drop checker is pretty close to yellow. But you know, watching the fish, I, everything you know, is good. Yep, everything is good. So, um, another thing that can give you a little more stability in your life is to buy as big of a cylinder as you can fit under your tank, because then you go through this a lot less. Because yeah. when I only had a five gallon. For both of these, oh, it was changing, which now I'm looking over here. No, it's still going. I'm like, is it empty? No, it's still going. Um, you know, I was changing it every like seven weeks. Ugh. Oh, oh, hell no. <laughs> yeah, that's a pain in the butt. But now I have a 10 pound one. I may get a 20 pound one. Just have to go through it as much as set it and forget it i have a very stable regulator that's why i paid the money so it set it mm -hmm. forget it it's you know the door is shut here so like my cats and stuff aren't pestering at it so yep. you know it's it removes a lot of the the worries about it and you know the very first aquariums i kept I mean, not including when I was a kid, okay? Because my dad kept those. I didn't keep them. I was eight. Mm -hmm. But as an adult, the very first aquariums I kept were all CO2. I just jumped right in. Oh, really? So, yeah. I never well, it, did I mean, low it was check. Just normal for you, for sure. Normal, yeah. I mean, I did a lot of reading. I asked a lot of questions. I saved up. I made mistakes. I mean, my biggest mistake was a cheap regulator. That's why I'll never do that again. So, I mean, if you're feeling nervous about it because you're like, oh, I don't know, I don't know, not this year, that's okay. But you can jump right in and you can be okay. Yeah. Yeah. And my, I mean, and this 90 behind me, yep, I have killed most of my fish with CO2 with a big mistake. And that big mistake was not a cheap regulator. It was actually a very good regulator, but it was, uh, I guess my biggest mistake was ADHD because I did something with the regulator completely forgot or like with the cylinder moving stuff around, just completely forgot that I had like handled it pretty quickly and roughly. And yeah, I guess I had turned that needle valve to 11. Yeah. And I lost all of my fish in two aquariums because I had a cheap regulator and cheap regulators. They do something called end of tank dump. Mm-hmm. And that's where the needle valve sticks open at the end of the life of the tank. And all of a sudden your tank is turned into a soda fountain. And I wasn't home when that happened. And every fish and shrimp died. It was heartbreaking. It was just heartbreaking. And that regulator was always a pain in the ass to adjust. It was always bad. It was always just, I mean, it would take me days to dial it in. So that's why I spent the money and I got something mm -hmm. that I knew would be good. Now, are there ones that are good at a lower price point? Probably, but I haven't tested everything. So I don't know because I am not a tester. That is not what I do. Yeah. I can confidently recommend the F zone as your rock bottom cheap. It's like if you, if you want to spend the least amount of money on a regulator, F zone being 90 bucks, that is the absolute minimum I would go. But would and you go with an F zone again, or would you spend the money and get a better one? It depends. So that like, I'm okay with the F zone on certain tanks. Like I have it on my 40 and 
well, and I have it in all, like I, I would, actually what I would probably do with an F zone is put it on the largest cylinders that I have just so I don't have to mess with it as often just yeah. because it is kind of a pain to dial in. Yeah. Um, but that's, I have a lot of tanks. If I had two tanks like you, yeah, I would probably get like one of those Cadillac regulators. Yeah. I mean, I'm for a beginner. Save up the money and get a CO2 art. That's not as expensive as the GLA. Yeah. And I've heard very good things. Steven has that. When the co-op comes art. out with theirs, I think that's also a good option. But like, it's so much easier for a beginner to have a better regulator. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just so much yep. easier. I definitely agree with that. So, um, yeah. So, so anything so else? I mean... The last one I think maybe we should touch on is light, just because uh, a lot of tanks like this will require high light. A lot of yeah. fish get stressed the hell out by high light. Yeah, that that might be true. I mean, I think that you can give those fish some hiding places yeah. like echo caves. Yep, I mean, yeah, even, or just dense vegetation. Know, yeah, there's lots of places to hide in this tank. There's lots of shady places because look, that water lily is so overgrown. I mean, mm -hmm. geez. So there's lots of, there's lots of hiding places, but I have rainbows and they're, they're outgoing and idiotic. They're not afraid of anything. Yep. They don't so, seem to mind the light. Yeah. Um, a few of my, I mean, obviously my plecos, they hang out around the crypts and stuff during the day. Yeah. Uh, another thing that helps with like blasting it with lighting is like, if you're like me and have a long photo period, most of that photo period, the light is actually very dim. And then it ramps up to full blast for yeah. a few hours and then back to dim. So during the dim stages, you know, all my fish are totally out and about chilling, right. doing whatever. And I think so, that like fish like plecos, they're going to hide even at normal light, that's just the behavior of the fish. They want to have caves. They want to hide. They want to be a $500 fish you never see. That's what they want to do. Listen, my poop factories in this 90 um, are pretty outgoing. They're out and about because fact, they're not $500. You can see one, can like see one more, on the right. right the more now. you spend, the less you'll see them. That's how that goes. I don't yeah, think you spend that those. much on your plecos. Nah, comment. And well, I didn't spend any on these. I, I made them with other plecos. You made them. You'd, you'd like to pay someone to get rid of them at this point. You have so many. So. <laughs> Very true. Yeah. I don't personally keep any terribly shy fish. And there are other things that can make your fish comfortable that have nothing to do with light levels. Having sufficient size schools i think is the biggest one having a peaceful grouping of fish you know like i'm not gonna throw like one angel fish in the middle of this tank there's probably that's probably mm. not gonna be terribly happy you know you have to think when you stock right. it but that has nothing to do with plants so i think the last thing is like algae okay my tanks don't have a lot of algae this tank has no algae does that affect my fish happiness? I, I fish don't, unless they're like off grazers that like to eat algae. I don't think my rainbows care. Eric, why rock? Eric, you weren't here for my lecture at the beginning. You're just so nice. Eric, thank you. But um, Foxy needs our help. She so if someone could post that link again. Um, yeah. we need to, we need to help her she, out. She needs a new medical grade bed. But that's okay. Cause that 20 bucks that you just sent to me, I can turn it right back around and send, send it, it to, to Foxy. Roxanne. Send it to Foxy. That's right. So yeah, algae. And I mean, for all folks, grazers, that uh, word is so funny. All folks. But you can feed them other things. I mean, like if you run out of algae, like it happens. Like if you have like a bunch of auto sinkless and they eat up all your algae, that could happen in any tank, right? Then you've got to mm -hmm. feed them something like, I don't know, what do you feed? Do they, they eat like the soy lint green? Yeah, so most ashy or something. Most of the things that I have that eat algae will eat, like the plecos, for example, they will eat the same catfish wafers that I give to my quarries every day. And yeah. so will so will my panagara, so will my hillstream loaches. So yeah. If there's no algae for them to eat, green beans. they're covered. Green yeah. beans, too. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, and the other thing is, is like those grazers, they're not just eating algae, they're eating bacterial biofilm, which I, I have plenty, this is a mature tank. There's plenty of biofilm in there, but apparently that bacteria AE works really well for plecos, according to Alyssa Bentley, who is very smart about pleco breeding. Oh, yeah. So, you know, it's not just, it's not just my lack of algae. So. Auto sync list would be like the one where you have to worry about running out of algae, but not just running out of algae, but like running out of the specific algae that they eat. Right. So that's when they eat biofilm too. So that's when the bacteria e comes into play. You can do the, um, you can get the rocks and pour the, um, the Rapashi, the, uh, what's yeah. it called? Super, super green works the best for those. Yeah. I just think that goes down to smart stocking. Just yeah. think about, how many autos you buy autos are happier in a group don't buy just two autos Mm -hmm. but don't buy 30 autos if you don't think you can feed them long term that goes for whether you have plants or not maybe your tank is never going to be able to support that many maybe just get five or six don't get two they're not going to be happy so you've got to think about that but the last thing is is like all the things that I do to get rid of algae in my tank are all the things that make plants happy. Yeah. Mostly the biggest thing I do to get rid of algae is clean. You change the water, vacuum up the crap, clean the filter. Those keep that keeps the plants happy, but fish like that too. Fish yep. fish like they don't want your filter to be super scuzzy. No. Nah. So shrimp love it. Shrimp love a filthy tank. They do, but they don't <laughs> mind a cleaner tank as long as they mm. have food to eat. Yeah. I mean, they'll eat extreme krill f- flakes. Cherry shrimp are not picky. So. Nope, not at all. They will eat poop or they will eat your finest foods. That's right. They don't care. <laughs> Just breed like tank roaches. Well, do we have anything else to say on this topic? I think our tanks are happy places for fish. I think they are very happy. And just... Right. Also happy are my natural ones with the algae and stuff. Just, right. it's uh, just a different, it's a different, a different lifestyle. Definitely. Yeah. So Let's questions, see, questions, any questions? Yeah. Um, I got Nuga Ed. Thanks for coming. Got to hit the road. Can't read anymore. All right. The road toad. So Two Cooley says she promotes algae all over her new 29 for a Borneo loach. That's interesting. Yeah. What's a Borneo loach? It's a, it's a hill stream. Like oh, okay. They, they call okay. them Borneo suckers, I believe. Yeah. Um, I have tons of uh, hill stream loaches. Well, I wouldn't say tons. I have eight of them. And they seem to eat anything. Like, they eat yeah. extreme krill flakes. Everybody loves krill flakes. They eat tablets you know the extreme sinking wafers Mm -hmm. and i I have algae on my rocks too that they can eat so yeah they get stuff to eat i don't think i don't think the hill stream loaches are very picky now they'll eat anything but i they will also the hill stream the reticulated hill stream loaches will eat uh black beard algae do they i'm not they don't eat a lot of it that's nice because yeah, that's the small. worst algae. I haven't had that in years, though. So Ooh, this back, wood. this black, uh, I mean this this background, the um, that's behind me, and I, I, it just occurred to me from the morning show because they played uh, the B roll song, and whenever I got these picta, the whole back wall was covered with like. Of like a almost purplish tinted black beard algae. Oh, I remember that. And since then, I got those um, reticulated hillstream loaches. And in the beginning, they were all over that wall all the time, and they um, went through the algae, and then then they got off the wall, and they were all over the plants. And the algae has not come back, so they're either doing preventative maintenance or. Something's I just changed feel like where it's not sometimes growing. Sometimes algaes, there's just like a commensalism, you know, there's a cycling of different things Could be. through the habitat as it matures. And then sometimes algaes just disappear. And I don't think we can attribute it to anything. So yeah. I saw a good question from uh from Jason. He asked So uh, 
Killer Kitty was the first one. Uh, oh, how God, do you're you begin? so good just doing things in order. <laughs> yeah. I Well, if I go out of order, I'm going to forget <laughs> just how that is. So how do you begin the plant selection process for a tank, like a 75-gallon? How do you know how many and what kind? Well. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of that's experience. I think that when you're a beginner, you need to just try to grow a lot of kinds of plants, a lot of easy plants. And you need some stem plants mm -hmm. at the beginning because they're going to suck down nutrients. Now, I have started tanks without many stems. Yeah. I'm, you know, a little more advanced. Um, don't worry so much about aquascaping yet. But I would say to get a lot. Get a lot more than you think you will. That you'll For need. sure. Yeah, and, and if you're not experienced with plants, you might, you know, you're going to lose some uh, possibly. Yeah as you're figuring out like i can't if i calculated how much money i've lost in just plant meltage like literally never going to get it back i would be kind of sick but it was a learning process yeah and i don't lose as many i haven't really lost as much in a long time because i you know i've been doing this you, longer i kind of know mm -hmm. i kind of know what will grow but i will say that i like when you look at md fish tanks like one of the keys to his success is look how crazy dense he plants. Mm -hmm. Now I, you don't need to go quite that high because it is a lot of money, but the higher, the more you plant, the easier it gets. Yeah. You have to do a lot of research too. If like you're planning mm -hmm. escape and you want to know like what, what am I going to put in the background? How much of that do I need? Mm -hmm. So when we were doing my 40 breeder scape uh, the other day, Brooklyn brought me this, um, uh, just drawing of the tank, you know, with, with grid lines and stuff. Yeah. And just told me to get out my color pencils and, you know, draw a map of what I want in there. Yeah. Now I obviously didn't do that, but it was good to think about. I had, I had the plant map in my head already. So. Yeah. I didn't need to. And I, I don't know if I would worry quite so much about scaping just to begin. I would just get kind of a mix of background, mid ground, don't go too crazy with too many kinds of foregrounds. Get a couple at the most. No, just get as many grow. as you don't listen to Kelly. You get all the plants you want and you see which ones will work. Well, I mean, I just don't think there's a whole lot of value for foreground getting like 18 <laughs> kinds of foreground. I guess I would just say aesthetically. That. No, but yeah. aesthetically, because it's really hard to separate those once they get mixed. Yes, so, I mean, if you get things like cryptocorn, parva, or lucens, then they're easy to separate from other things. But, like, if you have, like, hair grass and Monte Carlo and all those mixed, it's, it's a little tough. So, but buy more than you think you will, you'll need, for sure. Mm -hmm. So, the smallest tank you'd run CO2 in, I think you've gone a lot smaller than I have, because I don't like small tanks. I've got one running in a seven, and that's the smallest I've gone. I have uh, the smallest tank I've ever owned. I think I had a five gallon tank once. I did not run CO2 in it because I was a grad student. I was very poor and I didn't have money for that. I have it on a 10 gallon right now. Um, I don't know if I were to go, I'm never going to keep a tank without CO2 period. End of story. So if I wanted to do like the pack a bowl contest, which by the way, we should be promoting that. That's a cool contest. Yes. It's if someone's awesome. got a link to the uh, the yeah. rules and stuff for that, it's been extended to, it's due now June 4th, oh, hopefully cool. I'm being, so we got just under three weeks. Um, I've already seen Fishy Mons Bowl. It looks really mm -hmm. good. It looks really good. So, uh, but anyways, would I put CO2 on that bowl? Yeah, I would. Because uh, my seat, my... Uh, hell, why not? <laughs> why, not? why the hell I, not? I have, I have the space on my regulators because I have uh, I have manifolds. You know what? That's I a good point. For them. I would do when it. you are about regulators, when you are doing, when you are doing tiny tanks like that, mm -hmm. it becomes really, really, really important that you get a regulator that has like the best needle valve in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Because you don't want it to drift at all. So true. Yeah, you're going to be injecting like a bubble every half, uh, every two seconds or something like yeah, that. And you need to have really fine control to get yes. that steady because it's really easy to go over. So spend the money. Yeah, it's a good point. 
so Shanna, I saw that question earlier. She was asking what's some good resources for beginners starting CO2 systems. I mean, there's a lot of YouTube videos. I haven't watched too many of them. I think the two hour aquarist is the very best site. Do they have a CO2 guide on there? They do. They do okay. they have a yeah. CO2 guide and it's really good. And I, all of that information is current and it's very high quality. I mean, he advertises his own fertilizer on there. So you can take that with a grain of salt. If you buy that fertilizer, it'll work fine. You could also just use easy green. That will also work fine. Um, I think that's, mm -hmm. I think that's the best resource personally. Yeah. We, we talked about my, my opinion on the, on how the fertilizer is sold, but it doesn't yeah, matter. There's fertilizers. another YouTube channel. He hasn't posted in a long time. I just can't remember his name. He's done. He, if you search for like CO2 regulator reviews and all that, you'll get to his channel and it's so good. What is his name though? It's, hmm. uh, if I think about it next week, I'll, I'll share it. Okay. But he has some really good guides on like uh, water parameters, K, you know, so KH and GH. Um, those are really good. So Bentley Pasco, I think, is a good resource. He, I don't agree yeah, with him yeah. on everything, but for Shanna, you guys have like the same kind of water. That's so a lot true. Of the stuff that applies to him will apply to you. It doesn't necessarily apply to everyone. That Pacific but, Northwest advice about you can grow anything at all. It's yeah, easy. Low and, it low and slow CO2. But that <laughs> applies to you because you have very soft water. Very low cage. Probably almost no cage. So I think he's a really good resource. He does know quite a bit. This stream, I mean, we do our best. I have to chuckle at this. Ah! <laughs> I have broken when I was <laughs> broken a bed before. <laughs> Wait, what? I've broken a bed before. Me too. <laughs> it, it happens. It happens. <laughs> uh, yeah, Brooklyn says you will lose plants. Uh, unless you're really lucky and magical and yeah, you can, you just, I mean, I, I, still, I still lose some plants, you know, I mean, it just, it just mm -hmm. happens, but sometimes I don't lose them. I just let them go. Like yeah, this yeah, plant is too fussy for me and I'm tired of coddling this one plant. You well, can just, I, I don't go a little crazy with like what I can grow because I mm -hmm. know that I can't grow highlight stems. Or not highlight stems, but like the low KH loving stems. It's not going to work. Yeah. I don't have the water for it. And mm -hmm. I don't have the patience for it. So mm -hmm. grow easier plants. If you if you want to, or you can be like me no, and just, just try start. everything and see what just sticks. Start. To start. To start. Yeah. Because you want to get your system mature before you try some of the harder plants. Because you don't want your harder plants to die from algae. Yeah, I will say so. This this bedroom aquarium, this ninety, it's you know it's high tech, two lights, CO two injected. But I don't. There's nothing in here that I would say is difficult. I mean, there's hygrophila, there's bulbitis that you sent me. There's this giant sword here. There's epiphytes um, like um, Anubias and Boos, Bow. The only other stem plant I think uh, the Bacopa. So yeah, all, yeah. all easy stuff. It just looks a lot better when you got CO2. Yeah. And pink flamingos are a trickier plant. And even if you have really great conditions, they might be fussy because they're not genetically very stable. It <laughs> has nothing to do with your skill as an aquarist. I think. Yeah. That's, it's just the way they are. And sometimes they can do well for a while and then quit. I, I mean, I've had that happen. Oh, that reminds me. I didn't get to do it, but I want to do a new weekly segment on this show that will only last like a minute. But I'm going to take a picture every week of the pink flamingo crypt that uh, Greg's Planet Tank sent me. Oh, yeah. So I can monitor its progress because it's doing well. Like That's the other awesome. ones, the other ones just melted away. And I'm like, well, it's a crypt. Maybe it'll come back. Well, nope. 
That's another not. thing. If you have algae in your tank, like a lot of algae, like let's say you're just going through an outbreak of hair algae or something, mm -hmm. kiss your crypts, go kiss those crypts goodbye. Your other crypts, oh, they'll be fine, but those pink, pink flamingos, just kiss them goodbye. Yeah. They're delicate flowers. Yep. The first one I got was in a was in the 40 with you know tiny leaves and they got spot algae and then it said bye. Yeah. Fishyman's so, bowl is okay. Oh, who's judging Fishyman's bowl? It looks really good. It looks good. I like it. But I can't pack a bowl because you know why? I got to have tanks with lids. Fat Kitty cannot handle that. <laughs> he can't handle it. What plants can you keep without CO2? Nearly all of them. Nearly all of them. Anything that's an easy plant for sure. Um, Everything in this 90 behind me can be kept easily without CO2. The only things I have that I don't think do well without CO2, I don't think Monte Carlo does particularly well without CO2. Mm -hmm. um, dwarf hair grass, I don't think it does well without CO2. Those are the kind that just, they can survive. And they survive they're not going to they're not gonna carp it like you want it. But otherwise, every other plant I have is fine. I don't think I have anything else. Anything that's an easy plant is going to be fine. Things you can't keep are things you can't keep unless you have soft water, for one. So, yeah. like, I also don't think Alternate Thera Renickii does as well without CO2. You can do it, but I don't think it's near as good. It doesn't really do that great for me regardless. I don't, it it's, does really it's, good for me until I got those damn gobies. It's so fussy. Like, it's too much light, too little light. You'd really have to find a balance with that one. It really like it looks like it's one of those plants that you need to just like blast the shit out of with light, but it doesn't really respond well to that in my experience. I I mine looked so good, and then those gobies, and like three days later, later it was shredded. So I don't know. Maybe it just Damn likes gobies. what I've got going. I've never had a problem with it. Hmm. So too coolie, your your pink flamingo may not let it go. Come. There it go. <laughs> Them going. roots have rotted and disintegrated. And I'm sorry to say. Yeah. Yeah, so. Bex can't have lidless tanks. Tiny kitty can't handle her shit either. Well, Hard water is not better for plants. plants. I've got a fat kitty that doesn't like to jump on top of things. So as long as the tank yeah. is like not on the floor and low to the ground, it's all right. But yeah. rainbows, rainbows jump. Most plants prefer a lower KH. In fact, they like KH of zero. Yeah. So let's um, define yeah. hard water first, because this Good is like call. one of my one of my pet peeves. I know because... this is your thing. This is what we're putting on your tombstone. Yep. Hard water in general. When when someone says hard water, that's the actual mineral content in the in the water. That's the calcium so, and magnesium. Calcium and magnesium. And plants do need a little bit of that. They don't need it nearly as much as fish do. Um, but then KH, alkalinity. That's not. That's the. I don't consider that hard. I mean, we in this case, we when we say soft water plants, I know that we're talking about alkalinity, like low alkalinity. But um, it's. If you have weird tap water like me, where you have yeah. no minerals, but you have medium alkalinity, it's, it gets very confusing. Whereas so like every about... place I've ever lived, so because I live in the Midwest mm -hmm. where it's over limestone aquifer because, you know, it's above an ancient ocean. So it's made of calcium carbonate and magnesium carbonate. So my KH and GH are always equal, always equal. So most of the things that, yeah, like Bonnie Viper said, start with easy plants. Uh, there's there's a long list of easy plants yeah. that we're, are going to do well in a wide range of KH. And yeah. with those, I guess, what do you think is about the threshold for when even those plants are looking kind of sad, like 13-ish? Or you had like 20. It's 22. 22, life, yeah. Life was hard. Life was hard. I mean, I was blasting the CO2. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were just a lot of things I couldn't grow. I did the best I could. And lights were not as good back then, unless you had a lot of money to burn, which I was in grad school. I was very poor. So, yeah. Um, most plants don't want terribly hard water, if, if at all. I mean, some plants don't care. 
Apparently, Monte Carlo needs a little bit of calcium and magnesium yeah. compared to like Seattle water. There are a couple others like Ballisneria needs a little bit. But, but if you've got Seattle water, you can add the GH boost without adding KH. You don't have to do right. I mean, and all that. Yeah. And uh, why would you ruin Seattle water? I mean, God, no, I don't know. Love that, you water. ruin I'm Seattle wrong. water by keeping African cichlids. <laughs> you know, sometimes you just got to work with the water you have. There's a mm -hmm. reason why African cichlids are so popular in Iowa. I mean, there's a lot of really great breeders there because that water is so hard. It's so hard. Yeah. And people really like live bears. So, I mean, sometimes you just got to work with what you got. It's certainly easier that way. Yeah. And don't forget the snails. That's right. Snails love it too. That's right. They do. Uh, we should also, thinking about snails and CO2, that's another thing that you just can't really, I mean, certain ones do fine, thicker shells, but. Their shells are never going to look as good though. I mean, because no. I have some ram's horn snails that are seriously that big around. You know, they're over, some... they're over an inch, so they're growing. Their shells are not super pretty, but, I mean, God, they're growing. They're doing fine. And right. I have all my boots on snails, and, you know, they do okay. But they're n I would not keep a mystery snail because they're never going to have that beautiful shell. No. They're just not. But, you know, life is about choices. You can't keep every fish and every invertebrate in every tank. You just can't. That's that. Correct. Life is about trade-offs. And see, I've got ram's horns. They do get big. Um, they, you know, a lot of them have white shells, just kind of how it is. Yeah. Normally, if I see one that was just like a baby in, in a CO2 tank, I'll just take it out and I'll put it in my other ones because, like, I have my quarry breeder tank that I just have a bunch of ram's horn snails because yeah. I happen to like ram's horn snails. I don't mind them. I, I like them, too. I mean, that's why the other day when I saw one that was, like, huge, I was like, yeah, way to go, guy. Way to get big. But their shells never look as good. Yeah. I haven't had issues with shrimp and CO2 injected tanks. Whenever we were, we were emptying everything out of that 40 breeder, like, I'll take coal cherries sometimes, and I'll yeah. put, like, 30 or even 50 of them in, um, in my 40 where the big Australian rainbows are. And yeah. then the next day I'll see zero of them and I'll never see them again. But um, they were, they were making a life in there because when we took everything out, there were like a hundred or so just swimming around the shallow tank after yeah. we took everything out. And I've never kept carrot, carotene, carotene shrimp. I've never kept them. Ne neither have I. I don't, have soft enough. I don't have low KH, GH enough water. I don't. Yeah. But lots of aquascapers do keep them and do fine. So apparently it's fine. Ballisneria is a good one for hard water. Yes, it is because it can actually metabolize the carbonate and use it mm -hmm. directly. So that's that's a good choice. Yeah, it's a beautiful plant. But man, I don't want to keep it because it's really invasive. It's beautiful, <laughs> though. Yeah. I like Elodea it. and hornwort, those are okay. Also, I am not a huge fan of either of those personally because they float up and I don't like that. But I've never had hornwort because I hear like all the little needle leaves just go everywhere. I'm not interested. Uh, yeah, I'm not interested in anything that floats. I don't no. like floating plants. I like my plants anchored in the substrate. Plus, I use CO2. Nobody who has a CO2 tank is growing hornwort. That would be madness. Like, oh my God, I can't even imagine. What if hornwort is like super popular in your area and nobody else has it? What if you just had a hornwort farm? I don't know. How many pounds of hornwort would you have to harvest a day? Oh my God, I don't know. I would rather just do my medical writing job to make my money. <laughs> Probably a bit more per hour. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. five o'clock. Where are we all going next? Next, we're going to Fantastic Freaks, right? Yep. Stay Head on over there. there. And I'm going to Lillian's school because her fifth grade graduation ceremony is oh, soon. Oh, 
congratulations, Lillian. And I'm going to walk my dog because it's 70 degrees and gorgeous out. So Awesome. It's uh, 90 here uh, with a high pollen warning, mostly <laughs> sunny. So, yeah. Yeah, it's really beautiful here. It was hot last week, but this week, much better. So, Well. Yeah. Yes, I will be wearing that shirt to the graduation unless Jenna chimes in and says I have to wear like people clothes or something like respectable human church casual. Jake I don't wore, know. Jake wore a tie last weekend. Oh, he a tie! Oh. He looked so handsome because we went to the symphony and dress is good. You know. Yeah, I mean, you, know? you, you have to dress like that. You gotta dress high class. You want to? No, I didn't. I didn't nag him to do it. He just does. So that was nice. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you to our awesome mods and yes, chatters and mergers and thank replay. You, super chatters. Let's all support Fox Ann. Um, thank you, everyone, for being here. Have a good night. Right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.